reconstructing humanoid dispersals and, ultimately, evolutionary trajectories in Asia is dependent on a currently limited fossil record. The Asian late middle Pleistocene fossil record is mostly restricted to the continent's east. Any humanoid remains from this time period documenting hominin evolution in southern Asia could thus help confirm previous hypotheses, or reveal new lineages. If you love geography, then trust me, you've never seen a globe like this before. From their distinctive graphics to their advanced technology, you will quickly realize that mover globes are something special. Indeed, mover globes is a unique kind of world globe, and their new antique style globe is stunning. To create soothing rotations, mover globes' unique spinning globes combine power from ambient light and torque from the Earth's magnetic field. Mover globe updated the traditional world globe with patented technology. Each globe has a transparent outer shell made of high-quality acrylic that has been carefully selected. This external layer remains stationary while an internal layer spins, powered by solar cells and advanced magnets. Mover globes with world maps are especially stunning, and there are a variety of designs available, ranging from relief maps to antique maps. Mover globes take on the world globe is a fashionable option for your home or office, and each globe is handcrafted and rotates without the use of wires or batteries. Get your globe today by clicking my special link in the description. Teeth can be compared to the black box of an ancient human, because a significant amount of information regarding their life and biology is conserved in the tooth. Paleoanthropologists have consistently employed them as a means to delineate and differentiate species within their research, therefore teeth serve as valuable fossils. For example, a tooth discovered in 2022 in Cobra Cave in Southeast Asia was attributed in the media to be from the elusive Denisovan group, but that representation does not align with the actual report. The tooth's estimated age falls within the range of 131,000 to 164,000 years, and it is attributed to a female individual who likely died during between 3.5 to 8.5 years of age. In the conducted study, the researchers conducted a comparative analysis of the molar in question with those of other ancient human specimens. The findings indicated that the observed molar exhibited distinguishable characteristics that deviated from the dental features typically associated with species such as Homo sapiens or Homo erectus. According to the researchers, the tooth exhibited the highest degree of similarity with a molar from a Denisovan mandible, unearthed in the region of Tibet. The observed characteristics of the lower molar align closely with the anticipated features associated with Denisovan specimens. The researchers posit that the presence of exceptionally large teeth in the specimen suggests a probable affiliation with the Denisovans. However, certain researchers exhibit a higher degree of skepticism, primarily due to the absence of a DNA analysis conducted on the tooth. Additionally, the challenging nature of performing such an analysis, in the tropical climate where the tooth was discovered, further compounds the skepticism. Indeed, the authors of this study make a series of assumptions, in order to establish the authenticity of the fossil as belonging to the Denisovan species. It is uncertain whether this singular and poorly preserved molar can definitively be attributed to a Denisovan, a hybrid, or an unidentified hominin group. It is plausible that the specimen in question could belong to the Denisovan lineage, a prospect that would be appealing due to the intriguing implications it would entail. Nevertheless, it is imperative to obtain additional empirical support in order to enhance the level of confidence in the findings. There is a possibility that the tooth in question may have originated from either a Neanderthal or an individual with a genetic heritage that combines both Denisovan and Neanderthal ancestry. The researchers intend to persist in their exploration of the cave in Laos, with the objective of discovering additional fossils. Furthermore, they aspire to extract DNA from the molar in order to validate its provenance. Nonetheless, it is worth noting that certain researchers consider Denisovans to be part of a group of closely related ancient human populations, rather than classifying them as a separate species. The presence of the cobra cave tooth further supports the hypothesis that Denisovans occupied both the tropical forests of Southeast Asia and the cold mountainous regions of Central Asia and Siberia, although their precise evolutionary identity remains uncertain. The researchers in this study heavily relied on a comparison with the Xiaha jawbone to classify the tooth found in Laos as Denisovan. In fact, the identification of the jawbone as Denisovan was not unequivocal. DNA extraction was unsuccessful from the fossilized mandible, yielding solely limited protein evidence. Researchers studying this particular hominin group, which still presents numerous unresolved inquiries, 
aspire to contribute novel data to the existing body of knowledge. The challenge lies in accurately discerning the fossil remains and attributing them to the Denisovan species with a high degree of certainty. The absence of comprehensive biomolecular data significantly diminishes the significance of this recent discovery, thereby highlighting the challenges associated with conducting research in tropical regions. The researchers involved in this study propose that the individual in question may belong to the Denisovan population, given the abundance of genetic evidence from this human group in Southeast Asia. Nonetheless, it is important to note that the region has a limited number of fossil remains available for analysis. What's more, the nearest documented Denisovan specimen is located, approximately 1,500 kilometers north of the Xiaohe region of Tibet. This assumption is based on the proteomic analysis of the Xiaohe mandible, which suggests its affiliation with the Denisovan lineage. The primary basis upon which researchers rely is the morphological features and size similarity between the tooth found in Laos, and those of the Xiaohe mandible. However, it is important to also note that the possibility of a Neanderthaloid's origin cannot be definitively excluded. If this were the case, it would significantly extend the geographic distribution of this particular human species, by approximately 4,000 kilometers to the southeast of the Denisova cave, but the notion appears to be less probable. Based on the available evidence, it is likely that the individual in question belongs to the Homo erectus species, potentially representing a later stage of this species. If the tooth is indeed that of a Denisovan, this discovery, along with the recent discovery of a Denisovan mandible from the Tibetan Plateau, a high-altitude, hypoxic environment, would imply that this Pleistocene Asian population possessed a high degree of plasticity to adapt to very diverse environments. Denisovan dental remains show a mix of traits that are consistent with the current paleogenetic evidence that Denisovans and Neanderthals are sister taxa, and thus share some craniodental features. Unfortunately, no high-confidence peptides overlapped diagnostic amino acid position, s with sequence differences between Homo sapiens, Denisovans, or Neanderthals, making further paleoproteomic assignment impossible. This is consistent with previous research, which found that dentine and bone proteomes can distinguish closely related hominin populations, whereas enamel proteomes are less informative in the context of close phylogenetic proximity. Nonetheless, researchers conclude that the specimen belongs to our genus, by comparing the sequences recovered from the enamel protome with those of extant hominids for which protein sequences are available. The molar's proteomic analysis indicates that it most likely belongs to a female Homo species. The tooth has a large crown dimension and a complex occlusal surface, which distinguishes it from Homo sapiens' smaller and morphologically simpler teeth. The EDJ shape is a hybrid of Neanderthal and Homo erectus features closely resembling the tooth morphology of the Xiaohe Denisovan specimen. Although Homo erectus molars have even lower molar crowns and a narrower occlusal basin, the similarities between the tooth and Homo erectus are mostly due to the proportionally lower crown. The fossil has clear Neanderthaloids features, such as a well-developed mid-trigonid crest and internally positioned mesial dentine horns, but it differs from other Neanderthals in its much lower EDJ topography and occlusal basin shape. The observed differences from Neanderthals do not rule out the tooth belonging to this taxon, making it the most southeastern Neanderthal fossil ever discovered. However, given the tooth's morphological peculiarities in tandem, as well as the high degree of morphodimensional similarities with the molars of the Denisovan specimen from Xiaohe, the most plausible hypothesis is that the tooth belongs to this Neanderthal sister group. In point of fact, the Meiba cranium is ancient human skull fragments discovered near the village of Meiba in southern China. Many authorities believe the remains are of an archaic Homo sapiens or an Asian extension of the last common ancestor species, intermediate between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. Excavations in Eastern Asia are revealing details about human evolution and migration. Scientists studied the fossil Maber skull from southern China, that were dated between 100,000 and 130,000 years ago, believe the crania provide information about the pattern of human morphological evolution in eastern Eurasia. It should be noted that this falls within the last interglacial when temperatures were so warm that the Arctic Ocean was ice-free for part of the year, and sea levels were 30 feet higher than today. In fact, the interglacial periods, which occur about every 100,000 years and last around 20,000 years, are key to understanding hominin migration and evolution in Eurasia. 
Some characteristics are ancestral and similar to those of earlier Eastern Eurasian modern humans, while others are derived and shared with contemporaneous or later humans elsewhere, and still others are more closely related to Neanderthals. The fossils are a skullcap and parts of the right upper face, including nose bones. The brow ridges on Homo erectus are pronounced, forming an arch over each eye, and the brain case bones are low and thick. Even so, the brain appeared to be larger than that of Homo erectus, though precise measurement of cranial capacity is impossible due to the skull's incomplete base. The Maber skull exhibits characteristics of Homo erectus, archaic Homo sapiens, as well as modern humans and Neanderthals. If the skull reconstruction is correct, the Maber's upper face morphology is similar to that of Neanderthals, with a prominent nose and thick parietal bone at the bregma. The vertical frontal squama and thin vault are similar to those found in modern humans. The Maber skull has an estimated cranial capacity of 1,300 cubic centimeters, despite the fact that we do not have a precise measurement. This is comparable to the cranial capacities of modern humans and Neanderthals. Several years following the initial discovery of the skull bones, researchers conducted a meticulous examination of the peculiar dents located on the left side of the forehead. This investigation involved the utilization of CT scans and high-resolution photography. The cranium exhibits a diminutive concavity, approximately 0.5 inches in length, and possessing a circular morphology. Located opposite to this depression, the cranium exhibits a concave protrusion towards the cranial cavity. After exhaustively considering various potential factors, such as genetic abnormalities, diseases, and infections, the conclusion was reached that a head injury was the most plausible cause for the bump. However, the certainty cease at that point. Animal fossils discovered with the skull have been dated to approximately 130,000 years ago, during an interglacial when Neanderthals occupied Europe. The specimen's original scientific description noted similarities to European and Western Asian Neanderthals, but the Maber cranium lacks the distinctive anatomic features of Neanderthals, making classification difficult. Scientists believe they have discovered strong evidence in central China that Neanderthals arrived in East Asia around 130,000 years ago, and interbred with the local hominid population. The discovery broadens the range of archaic humans, suggests modern Chinese may have an ancient European ancestor, and calls into question the notion that Neanderthals struggled to mix with local populations, according to the researchers. Thus, the study sheds light on shared long-term trends in human adaptive biology and suggests that interconnections between populations across Eurasia existed during the late Pleistocene. This discoveries confirm that this region was a hotspot of diversity for the genus Homo, with at least five late middle to late Pleistocene species present. It is also worth noting that there are numerous specimens currently held in storage, awaiting a comprehensive reassessment of their taxonomic classification. The attribution of the aforementioned features, which bear resemblance to Neanderthal characteristics, to the Asian sister taxon known as the Denisovans, has been proposed. But, as stated, this suggestion is still a topic of debate. The alternative hypothesis, that the fossils belong to a group of Neanderthals who invaded southern China and Southeast Asia, cannot be completely dismissed, even if it is less likely. It was once thought that Neanderthaloids possibly evolved from the East Asian strains of Java Man and Peking Man, and spread along the foothills of the Eurasian mountains into Europe during the lush third interglacial period. Hey, Dad. Me? What? How do you get that hey. from that? 95% of that's got to be from the mother. And I am lowballing. Hey, Jeff.